Last time in Alone in the Dark, Carnby uh, lobotomized Jeremy. Totally deliberately. And everyone appears to be happy about it. I'm not really sure why. Also, the doctor is quite forgiving about Carnby pistol whipping him in the face. Does Emily know about Jeremy's condition? Yes. She seems to be handling it quite well under the circumstances. Yeah, we've not been able to speak to Emily as of yet about this whole thing. Does she still want to take Jeremy away from Dorsetto? I will have to insist that you do. This is not that kind of institution. That kind? You mean long-term care? You're gonna have to find a permanent home for Jeremy. The doctor's work is done. Jeremy, hang on for a little longer, okay? We'll be going back to New Orleans soon. Oh, good. I do so miss the city lights. Oh, we got some. Case closed. Detective Convy had found Jeremy and brought him back to Dersetto. He worried that Emily wouldn't be all that happy with his performance, considering Jeremy's impromptu brain surgery. Maybe she would refuse to pay him in full. It was the kind of thought that would normally infuriate Convy, but right now he just felt happy to be back. No matter if he would be seeing the $150 or not, he couldn't wait to rendezvous with Emily and go back to New Orleans. I mean, he still wants the money. Look, he owes Obed Morton money, and he needs this $150. It's very important. All right, let's talk to the other characters. Oh, yeah, it's, she's wearing a completed mask. Hey, Ruth. Glad to see you made it back to Dorsetto. You too, detective. Make sure to stay for the festivities. It's no Mardi Gras, but it ain't bad. The other, the side characters like this really haven't had that much of a role in the game, I feel. You seen Emily around? <laughs> I saw her packing some things into that old jalopy you arrived in about an hour ago. I'm sure she hasn't given up on you yet. All right, well, Emily's packing up to go. Well, yeah, nothing else for us to do here, but, you know, have a partake in the ceremony around the big old tree. Catch you later. <laughs> Looking forward to it, detective. I assume he tipped his hat. As David Harbour would be wearing a hat if we were playing as David Harbour. Good to see you back on your feet, Detective. Have some gumbo. Thanks. I'll save it for later. That's gonna be a long ride back to the city. We probably should fill up on something. Seems like everyone's in a pretty good mood. The Eve of St. John is the most important date of the whole year. It's the only day when the black goat of the woods tends to her young. You don't say. That does sound important. I'm gonna go look for Emily. Don't worry about her. She wouldn't leave without you, would she? Well, we did lobotomize her uncle, so I can't, I'm not entirely sure. What are you looking for? Just keeping an eye out for the stone. Radio says it could be a wild one. You don't know where Emily is, do you? She's packing some of Jeremy's things. Said she wanted to take him away. I'm sure she'll come and get you when she's ready. I'm sure she will. I should probably get a move on then. See you around, compare. The 
That is one impressive tree. More impressive than you could ever imagine. Like a face isn't going to come out of it, is there? So how does this all work? You dance around chanting? For the ritual, I mean? Stay and find out, detective. It might just do you good. A tree's not going to turn out to be like an ancient pirate, is there? You haven't seen Emily, have you? No, detective. I haven't. All right. All right, tell me what the hell's about to happen here. Every year we have a little turn the page ceremony by the tree. It's symbolical. Symbol it's like life has its cycles of grief and happiness. You know, just like a tree facing the seasons. Things change, but remain the same. I, I, I don't know, actually, I guess. So this is basically New Year's Eve, but with a tree metaphor. Exactly. You're so smart. It's about starting again. I mean, who could use a positive message like that and more than a bunch of lunatics like us? I mean, the only problem you seem to have is that you, you maybe like the bottle a little too much. I get the feeling some of you think this year is going to be special. Any idea why? Well, we got some new words, thanks to your buddy Jeremy, and some other changes to the program. Let's just say... We are all in this year. Oh, Jeremy uh, has added something to the festivities. C cleaning the tree? Wouldn't think the tree would need cleaning, but what do I know about this? Hey, kid. What are you up to? Preparing for the ceremony. I don't want to disappoint Mother. So, I should probably apologize for killing your dad. I mean, I'm, I already did apologize, but I'm not sure if that was to you or if that was to, like, a f f mental figment of you. Hard to say. What's your part in this? I'm the Cabri San Corn. It's very important. Only I can settle our debt. Hmm, yes, of course, the debt. The debt does need to, all debts need to be settled. We know this. You know, I had my doubts, but you are in the right place, Grace. I think you might be right, for once. All right, she's prepping the tree for the big festival. She's going to pay the debt. All right, we talked to everyone. I guess nothing else to do but wait. Everyone knows what to do? Y'all know the new words. Mrs. Thompson, we talked about this. I'm not sure everyone is comfortable. Doctor, I insist. This is important. We've waited for so long, Doctor. Let's just go with the old song. Not every change is an improvement. Boss, good or bad, we need to move forward. All in, Doc. Let's bet it all. But we don't know what we're dealing with. It'll be okay, Doctor. Better even. Hell, oh, there are praises and abundance to the black goat of the woods. Hear us, brother. Take pity on us. Take pity on us! Ever Hear there us, Mother, and, and take pity on us! Hear us, Mother, and take pity on us! Take pity on us! Mother, and take pity on us! Ever there are praises and abundance to the black goat of the woods! Hear us, Mother, and take pity on us! Hear us, Mother, and take pity on us! Accept our sacrifice! Judge our Judge our 
Are you crazy? This is the news that happened, Carl. Grace. Stop! Jeremy, come with me! Get over here! Jeremy, come with me! Jeremy, come here! No! There has to be a death of us! We're doomed! Jeremy! Oh, you hate to see that. There needs to be a sacrifice, and the sacrifice went bad. I got to stop the black goat. <laughs> what does the narration have to say about that? Yep. Detective Conby returned just as the festivities were about to begin. Emily was grateful that she didn't have to sit through whatever ceremony the people at the Seto had fashioned. Instead, they excused themselves and made their way to the front side of the house. With a tremendous sense of relief, Emily climbed into the car. She watched Combi ready the back seat for Jeremy in the rearview mirror. What a long night, she thought. Thank God it's all over. Well, that's not quite what happened. Right? That's the last one. This is the new one we got. I don't, I don't think the way the story is going is quite how the author is writing it. Yeah, we can't let it leave Dorsetto. We can't let this murderous tree get out. All right, it seemed like everyone died except for Grace, who got out through a window. Jeremy and Emily got out as well. It seems like everyone else did not go too well for them. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Well, that someone ended up throwing uh, a fiery lantern at the tree it just wasn't Carnby. Let's see. What path can we take? Well, I can't pick those up. We are, we're already full up. Can I go out through the window? Does not seem like it. This is this path is totally blocked off. Can't go this way. <clears throat> Doesn't seem like I can get into here. Unless I can approach from a different No, doesn't that seem like it? I my map is of no use here. I can't seem to leave. Oh, hold on. Is this a ramp? Oh, okay, we got, I think we got a ramp here. Okay, yeah, all right, let's get on this. All right, that tree is running and causing a big old mess somewhere. Did I pick that up, by the way? Or did I climb up here? A lot of wind. Ooh, 
debris. New melee weapon. All right, we can go there. And yeah, we're not going downstairs. Oh, hey everyone. Uh, sorry about the ruckus I was causing. I was just real mad because the sacrifice did not go as planned. I've been waiting for so long too. Uh, I just got frustrated. All right, it's wiggling. It's wiggling and wobbling. All right, I mean, I guess we just shoot it. I splorched something. Like, I splorched some stuff on it. Uh, I see more- yeah, more bubbles. Uh, oh, yeah. tired. Anything in particular? I'm out of bullets. But not out of booze. Ow. Oh. Alright, I was getting attacked from behind. I am getting debris as, like, a specific melee weapon right here at the end. I guess I should use it when I'm down there. Go, go. So when I was down here, I did not see any more bubbles. It falls down. Maybe I should, like, get out my debris and start swinging. Oh, no, it's broken already. Did not last. Oh, it's these guys. Oh, I got a crucifix. The best melee weapon of all. I mean, look at it shred through these guys. Oh. I got smacked. The crucifix was doing quite well, though. 
Those little spiders are quite powerful. We did learn this previously. That, um... The spiders do a lot of damage. <clears throat> Debris did not last long at all. Or at least not when hitting the actual boss. And why would we need debris if we get crucifix? I'm sorry about all this, but the rules are quite specific about the little girl was supposed to get hung. Uh, supposed to happen. Waiting all these years for that, and like with the, the the fateful night comes, and look what goes on. Look what goes on. There are rules, you know. There are rules for a reason. You gotta have rules, cause if you don't have rules, you're gonna have anarchy. That's what you're gonna have. Down we go. So I don't know if I can actually hurt it right now, or if I'm just supposed to fight the little guys that come out. Ugh. Oh, man. I'm all out of bullets. Got caught there. Got caught. Ugh. <sighs> 
He had enough of his sacks being shot. Just couldn't take any more bullets to the sacks. It does hurt quite a bit. Detective! Oh, what the hell was that? I tried to tell you. There was so much evidence. Their devotion to the black goat was like nothing I've ever seen before. I felt so dumb believing any of it, but I'm glad I did. Emily, why is your subtitle so small all of a sudden? Must be a sanity effect. Everything is out of order. This isn't the way the story goes. I shouldn't be alive. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome, buddy. How are you doing, sweetie? I kind of like it. You ruined everything. But I'm not mad. All right, you ready to head back to New Orleans? Come on, Jeremy. We're leaving. Can I come? I thought you said you didn't need saving. Don't leave her. She's important. Of course we're taking her with us. Unfortunately, it doesn't end with Carnby doing a jump for joy in the front of Dersetto. Case closed. No, uh, no skeleton chauffeur, apparently. All right, that was, uh, an odd last boss fight. I don't think the boss itself was doing much damage at all. It was just when the spiders came out, that's where the problem was. Um, but okay. 
the we inter oh we got some lyrics some real deep lyrics Well, I guess Emily, well, at the very least at the end, would have realized that something supernatural must be happening, considering the big old monster tree. And we saw that tree previously, we wondered if there was going to be a dead pirate in the tree. It wasn't a dead pirate. No, it was a... I, I guess it was the, uh, the, the black goat of a thousand young. Uh, that they were trying to do a ritual for. They got the they got the new words from Jeremy to do in their ritual, and they had to kill Grace to, to sacrifice. But then Emily and Carnby got involved, and the sacrifice went wrong. And you know what happens when the sacrifice goes wrong. You know what happens. Like whatever it is you're trying to resurrect, like comes back wrong, and all. You know, all angry and monstrous and starts killing people. We've all seen that. When was the first time you saw that? I think probably the first time I saw that concept was, uh... Like, when I was very young, one of my favorite movies was Conan the Destroyer, which does end in that kind of way. We're gonna resurrect the god! We have to sacrifice this girl to do it! Oh no! Now look what happened. Stop the sacrifice, and the god comes back, but it's not how you thought it was going to be. Um, so we had to fight the big tentacle tree that had sacks. It had a bunch of sacks. We had to shoot it in the sacks. Um, and they all just watched Dressetto burn down. It, Dressetto did not burn down in the original, which I was a little bit surprised at. That the house itself didn't get destroyed. Um... But in this one, it, you know, absolutely gets burned down. And of course, Grace goes off. And in a year, she's going to get kidnapped by pirates, maybe. Jeremy seems a little confused about it. I mean, lobotomy aside, he's saying, well, this this isn't how it was supposed to go. This is not how this, the story was supposed to end. As Jeremy does seem to be aware that he is a character written in a story. And uh, he is aware of how that story was supposed to go. And this was very different from how that story went. It was very different from the beginning. There was one part in the game where uh, Jeremy acknowledged it, saying that 30 years ago he was supposed to die, and he didn't, and now everything everything's different. But I wonder if uh, things would have gone any differently if perhaps Jeremy wasn't lobotomized, since they seem to be indicating that maybe whatever Jeremy's contract was, that maybe it was severed when we did that. But if, I don't know, I guess Jeremy said that he made his contract with the Dark Man because by doing that, the evil in Dersetto would be contained there, and I'm guessing he's talking about the tree. So... Uh, 
I don't know why... He, I don't know what the details of the contract would be that... If he kept his contract, it would stop the tree from, uh, from leaving. He apparently thought it was going to do that, though. Also, um... We never did meet Cassandra. I mean, we know that she's supposed to be dead, but still, considering that she's also apparently writing the story, I kind of figured she would come into play at some point. We did see her dead body in the graveyard. Well, I mean, it was Jeremy's mind graveyard, so that doesn't necessarily mean it was it was actually her. Um, but I guess she stayed dead. I guess she didn't actually come back. Even though she was writing the story the whole time. And actually, her last entry in the story was different from how things actually went. In her story, Carnby and Emily leave with Jeremy with apparently without any incident. So why did, uh, why did the events of the game diverge from her story? But only in that one part. That is strange. Well, this was standard difficulty. It says total play time, 10 hours, 52 minutes, 41 seconds. Edward Carnby, though, of course, that's not the Edward Carnby uh, we were we were playing as. We were playing as real Carnby, not uh, not David Harbour Carnby. But still, I did I did like his um, his VA for some of these lines. I thought that, uh, I thought that he did a pretty good job of portraying a confused, drunk Carnby. Well, but of course, we're not done with Alone in the Dark just because Carnby's is done. But also, we do need to play as Emily. And see, my, my understanding is that the game is mostly the same as her. Uh, but we will see how the cutscenes may differ. I also assume that whatever, like the, the chapter we had where we found out about Carnby's past sin, where he killed Grace's father, I assume that's going to be different for Emily. You can't just take that and like put it onto Emily's backstory. I don't think that would make sense. So it must be something different. I don't know what it would be, but uh, so that's one playthrough of Alone in the Dark. And uh, we're going to get going with Emily and see how things might differ for her, as she is the low-polygon protagonist going through Dersetto, and Carnby, I guess, is gonna be confused as to what Emily's talking about, and he's not gonna notice anything supernatural? I assume that's how it's gonna go for him. We'll take a break, and we'll get started with Emily. Emily. 